It's yours truly, DJ Ill Will, and you are now tuned into the Panic Room, starring your host, Pierre. Yeah. Boy, Will, you are killing it again today, as usual, boy. My man, DJ Will. Thanks a lot, bro. Thanks a lot, man. All right, y'all. Welcome to another episode of PS Panic Room. You know how we do. We talk crazy. We talk about what's, what's happening in current events, what's happening, and uh, what's happening. And you know, I don't ride solo. I'm Pierre, comedian extraordinaire, at least in my life. I think I'm extraordinary, so I'm going to go with that. Riding, as usual, I'm on shotgun. My girl, Tammy D. Oh, what up? What up, Tammy? Look at you. What up, girl? Got the new spectacles on, girl. Look at you. Yeah. I have two for Customized. ten. Customized. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we like customized. We get you two pairs. $20. Customized. Did you get the big pickle, too, while you was ordering? I'm going to pay a new port, a big pickle, and these glasses. There it is right there. No, they what, when you say customized, what does that mean? Your name I, is on it? My name is on it. Oh, well, damn. I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. And for some odd reason, I thought Disneyland yeah. was closed. <laughs> Okay, well, good luck. No, they don't. I like those. those but, and we, you know, we ain't gonna roll solo, just me and you, girl. We gotta bring the girl back again, mm-hmm. acting foolish as ever. Everyone's favorite queen of uh, comedy. Give it up for the one and only Miss Sunshine. Yeah. Give it up for Sunshine. Yeah, well, this show will be back again. I'm super excited to be here on Pierre's podcast. You know, uh, we got a guest, a returning guest, my first ever returning guest. I had to bring him back. Last time he was here, he killed it. People asked him, you know, well, bring him back again. He's back, you know, back, he's back by popular demand, to be honest with you. He's also demanding in all these movies he does, man. One of my favorite actors, also a favorite person from my hometown of Washington, D.C. Y'all gonna love him. Uh, He's gonna kick the business knowledge this time. Not just much, not all about his career, but more about the business of um, acting. And I think this would be a good thing for you know, a lot of young actors to watch this. Anybody who's trying to start their own business, I guess, who's trying to do anything themselves. So without further ado, give it up for the legendary Mr. Clifton Powell! <laughs> Y'all yeah, good? Y'all good? Yes, yes, yes. All right. What's going on with you? Looking like I tell you. You gotta keep well, it. You gotta keep it fresh, bro. Well, yeah. You, you, I'm you, from DC, baby. I know that's right. Um, you're looking good, man. You're damn looking good as you looked last time because you had the same suit on. But that's okay though. You know, you're playing the role again. That's what you're doing. I couldn't remember what I wore last time. I was like, no, did I wear all black? Okay. And I was like, I'm wearing all black again. Okay. Black go with everything. I know that's right. That's right. Always that's better on black. And this time I made sure we had a picture of Clifton Powell. Oh. Break the power. Okay. Oh, that little bullshit Eddie Murphy like, oh. did last time. The real deal here. Okay? That's his twin. No, no, this is real I was deal, 70 right. in that picture. No, no, damn. <laughs> Reverse today. No. Good no, brother. Again, man, let me tell you, first of all, man, the, the man for you, man, man, the, when we put the episode out, man, everyone was like, man, this one my favorite episode with Clifton, man, because you kicked the knowledge. You were so real, so fun, man. And people just asked me, when you going to bring him back? When you bring him back? And you're my first guest. I'm bringing back, brother. Okay, my first. And I'm happy to do it. And we did chop it up. And you were like, P, I want to kick about the business, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to talk about the business mm-hmm. of acting and, you know, what it goes through. Because a lot of young actors watch this. Yeah. And they came to me and was like, yo, man, I like what he's talking about. You know, did, did a lot about his life. But could you mm-hmm. talk about more, expound more about the business part of it? Mm-hmm. And I think... Mm-hmm. You, 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 you're so gracious. You want to help these cats. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you don't give back the way you're about to give back. To tell them the inside of the business, not just well, your career, but it, the business. You know, it's kind of hard because when you, I think what happens is, you know, of course, we're from D.C., mm-hmm. we're from the streets and mm-hmm. grew up in the inner city. And my teachers, you know, like mm-hmm. I tell everybody, Debbie Allen was my dance teacher and Glenda Dickerson, Mike Malone, and all mm-hmm. those people mm-hmm. that started Duke Ellington, uh, Peggy Cooper Kafers. They taught me to, to keep one foot in the streets and really help you know, because we came out of the 60s. So, but the new millennials, some of them want to receive the information and some of them don't. So mm-hmm. I've kind of pulled back on that a little bit, but I'm glad we're doing this because mm-hmm. I want people not to make the mistakes I make. There you go. You know, Appreciate and so that. that's what it is. So I, mm-hmm. I, I enjoy giving back, but I, I want to make sure like an audience like that, that really wants to hear it. Right, right, you know, right, so. right. No, no, we're in Atlanta. That's the capital of like black Hollywood. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of actresses. You know, a lot of people come to Hollywood or come here wanting to be an actress because they would have maybe the 
the cute person or a good actor in their little town and mm -hmm, come here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a lot of hardship, man. Mm -hmm, People don't mm -hmm. realize, I was quoted one time, I don't know if it's correct, not quoted, but I remember somebody saying this, that only like 5% of actors are working? 5%? You know how many thousands of actors are out there? And you probably, you, you fucking up and you you taking 4% of the shit. You know what I mean? you know, okay. He oh, is like in every... Oh, okay. Well, you know, what, what I always tell yeah. people, you know, when they talk about my career is I had 20 years of unemployment, you know, oh, and, okay. and, and also, um, you know, I had, I was, I've been homeless four times. Right, right. You know, I've run out of money a couple of times. Right, right. And I just didn't quit, you know, and one of the things that we talked about earlier that I didn't understand what I was doing, and I tell all young actors... Black, white, Latino, Asian, it doesn't matter. Read the SAG handbook because I didn't read the SAG, SAG handbook. And SAG is Screen Actors Guild screen for those actors who don't know. Guild, yeah. mm -hmm. And so when you join after SAG, it's after SAG now, mm -hmm. read that handbook because I was just, again, I tell everybody I was the worst actor in my program. My class wow. started the first class of Duke Ellington. I wanted to be a football player. I never wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then after that, I was going to be a bus driver because they made six dollars and fifty cents an hour. Right. And I tell everybody, I got three. What I got three eighty on my SATs. They give you two hundred for your name. Damn. And I got a full scholarship. That's what I say. Damn. Wow. I was a certified retarded guy. Right. You know? Right. 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 So what happened is I got into a, a grind when I got to Hollywood. I did ten years in New York, and then I had to start over when I got to Hollywood. And I didn't start making money in New York until the last three or four years. And then I came to LA and I had to start all over. So when I started working, I was just on a roll and I just, work came, you started, how can I make a living? And I didn't know that I was building, at some point, building my pension. Right, right, you, I remember you were saying that. You know, you so nice the check. first thing I'll say to young actors is, read the SAG handbook right. and stop listening to people telling you, Oh, if you're on a TV series, don't go do that little movie. Or if you're on a movie, don't go do that little TV series. Go do it. Stop listening to people. Because in another, I turned 65 March 16th, mm -hmm. April 1st, my pension recalculates. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Since I took my early pension at, night in, at 55, it recalculates at 65. I get another right. 10 pension points and I'll get, what, almost $10,000 a month for the rest of my life. And mm -hmm. that's because of all the work I didn't know I was doing. Right. Now, I get that, that part. But let me ask you about a young actress. What or actor? What is the mistake do you think some young actors come when they come to a city, you know, Hollywood mm -hmm. or whatever? Um, one of the things I first tell people is you got to first survive. You got to eat and sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let, yeah. Let's get that first done. Yeah. A lot of people mental, mentally think I'm going to, going to be auditioning and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, what would you tell a young actor? Because your time is different than now. Mm -hmm. But you are still ingrained with these younger actors because they probably come up to you and mm -hmm. you work on a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saints and Sinners, you've been killing it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing mm -hmm. that. What would you tell a young actor coming um, to here or Hollywood mm -hmm. about getting into the business, coming from their hometown, here, you, you get here day one. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. think I can do this? I can do this. I'm an actor. I was I was in Little Rock, Arkansas, and mm -hmm. the play killing it. Well, the the first thing I would say is have somebody assess your talent. Or somebody who's a somebody. Somebody who's a somebody. A teacher. Uh, reach out to the Lions Theater. Mm -hmm. Find somebody and send them a monologue, or let them let you do a monologue, because it starts with your training. Okay. You got to get trained. So, you know, and a lot of times I feel like, and maybe this is just me, you know, African-American actors don't get the same kind of credit that maybe Robert De Niro would get. Sure. But we're mm -hmm. just as trained. Angela Bassett is just as trained as Meryl Streep. I'm just as trained as Al Pacino mm -hmm. or Dustin Hoffman mm -hmm. or, 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 or Gene Hackman because we all kind of came out of the same system, the Stanislavski system. So that's the first thing because... You can have talent, mm -hmm. but you got to get it assessed. You can't go where you was a big fish in your hometown, and so now, and, and you never took no act, any acting classes, and you never trained anywhere. You got to get your training. So you may come down, maybe you won a beauty pageant, right. or maybe you won a, the theater award in your hometown, but you never really studied acting. Come down here and meet or get with someone, a talent agent or someone that a George Pierre type guy that can assess the casting it. Director. Yeah, the casting, casting director. director. You know, because a lot of times people are stepping out with no training. And at some point you may get a little bit, but when you get to that crucial place where you got to, back in my day you had to go in the room, right. you got to go and sit in what I call that hot seat, right. you got to be trained. 
It's so funny you say that. I remember when I was on a roll with these little movies I got, I, and I got them from my personality. Mm -hmm. Robert Townsend said, yeah, when I saw you in BAPS, I mean, for, you know, particularly in BAPS, if you hadn't done well in rehearsals, I was going to get rid of you and get someone else. I, got I did good enough. I had enough raw talent to get mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Just raw talent to get right. through what I had to do. Now, it right. wasn't like I was doing hell fine acting, you know, I did right. what I did. Okay. And I did how to be a player or whatever. But I started getting roles and I started getting brought in with some big time people. Mm -hmm. I think Mia Frazier, one of them big old, mm -hmm. whatever name, one big mm -hmm. old white people, big, making big movies and stuff. And I'm out there, you know, partying all night long, hollering at girls and shit, doing, mm -hmm. you know, doing everything I was besides studying them lines, getting it together. Mm -hmm. I get in the room, I'm like, what? I will kill you. I wish you would do something <laughs> to me, motherfucker. I know what I'm going to do to you. Man, you get one or two of them and you're with a good agency, you got to go. Yeah. So I wasn't prepared. Mm -hmm. I thought because I did the movies, I'm, I'm this, this easy. This ain't nothing. Yeah, niggas mm -hmm. easy playing yourself down there. I'm mm -hmm. being honest with you, you know, mm -hmm. boom. But mm -hmm. I learned that you have to be prepared when you, for these roles, you have yeah. to study, mm -hmm. cut everything else away, and get your ass to that that script. Because yeah. when I did study, study, and got a private person, sometimes you get your homeboy, or some, mm -hmm. an actor, or whatever, mm -hmm. yours, to read the lines over with you. Because mm -hmm. this, to me, don't this in a mirror, what mm, don't work for me. I need to be with somebody talking mm -hmm. back and forth, hear the rhythm, the flow of it. Mm -hmm. Even though that actor, that cast director might not give me the same, you know, vibe. Mm -hmm. But when I did have somebody, I nailed them. I got mm -hmm. callbacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just didn't take it as serious. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about, sometimes people think that, hey, I'm a rapper, I'm someone, I can go in and just do, my, do me and get through. Well, again, I, I will say, you know, when I first got to L.A., uh, which was a little different than, than, than New York because it's theater versus television and film, I remember I went in for this role, man, and I, I, I went in red for this pimp. Mm -hmm. And it was like one of my first big auditions in, in Hollywood. And I called my manager, I said, oh, I think I'm going to get it. She said, what happened? I said, the guy came to me, he said, man, you, 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 you killed that. You like a real pimp, huh? I was like, no, nah, I'm just an actor. She said, you ain't gonna get that. I said, why, why you said I'm not gonna get it? She says, don't listen to the hype. Mm. Do the work. Mm. Do the work. There you go, you so heard I that. Think, I think what happens is, and it happens with singers, it happens with actors, people who have never been trained, who feel like they can act, might have been like a big fish in their small town. And this is not to put anybody down. It happens to rappers, singers, actors who haven't been trained. It's all training. Comedians. Because comedians. When you get mm -hmm. to that first level, you can book some stuff on right. just personality, uh, raw talent. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start going in against Charles Dutton yeah. and, 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 and uh, uh, Courtney Vance and Blair Underwood and, 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 and Delroy Lindo and Ving Rhames, you got to be trained. You want to get some of those people? Yeah. Woo! And, and, and you got to go in Ooh. the room and you got to really be trained in acting to book. And back in my day, it wasn't Zoom and none of that. So when I did Rock, which shot my career out in LA, people don't remember, um, I was going in, they wanted a crack out crackhead. So I had seen, I saw Charles Dutton at a party, at a beach party, and I was like, Mr. Dutton, I'm friends with my buddy Walter Bennett. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So many people were talking to him. You know, Dutton was big at the mm -hmm. time. So they called me, they said, they want you to come in and read for this cracked out crackhead. So I went in looking like a cracked out crackhead, because mm -hmm. I'm from the theater. So I had on dirty clothes, everybody had on t-shirts and jeans. I had on dirty clothes, I blackened my teeth, I had dirt in my hair. But I stayed up and I memorized. I never did auditions where I didn't memorize. Mm -hmm. So I memorized everything. And I never auditioned, I do a performance in the room. And I went in and I did a performance and Dutton, they said, Charlie Dutton said, he said this to me, he said, when you left, I sent all the rest of those young niggas home. Mm -hmm. I, I, he didn't say Negroes, but he said, right, I right. sent the rest of the young niggas home because they weren't ready. So I always tell actors is opportunity meets preparation. How would you tell one of the biggest fears is like I heard there's three auditions you do. The, the one you rehearse before you get there, the one you do, and the one in the car on the way fucking home after you like, you know what I mean? So there's three of them we do. How do you, how do you get not being nervous? Like, like what helps a young actor not be nervous when they walk into that room? Okay. Because that can mess you up at times. The nerves is what can get the, you. The nerves are, the nerves never go away. Okay. Um, for instance, I just did a T.D. Jakes movie. I had a sermon and I was doing Saints and Sinners, and I didn't have enough time to really prepare for the sermon. And you know, I know how to do a sermon where somebody say, Jesus, mm -hmm. coming over, 
save your soul. So I'm looking down at the paper, looking up at the camera, looking down at the paper. That's really not how you do a sermon. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it as a pastor, you can get away with that. But if you're doing it on a camera, all we see is this. Mm. Your head going up and down. But I hadn't had a chance to memorize it because my schedule was crazy. Right. So I had to do a sermon last week. I made sure I got my butt in the house. I memorized those lines. I went over my beats and, my, and, and all my stuff. And, what I, and, and I nailed it because I had to cry. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so what happens is, the first time I did that sermon, as long as I've been in the business, when I tell you how gassy I was, Gassy me, gassy me. Gassy me. Like, my stomach was bubbling. Oh, shit. I'm talking okay. about because I was in the front of the whole church. The the principal cast was there, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I was stumbling because I hadn't prepared. Your nerves. It doesn't. Yeah. The experience is one thing, but experience ain't gonna save you when you're in front of that that camera. And 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 what happened was, you just get through it. I know how to get through it. Right. I made sure the second time I didn't do that. So what I tell young people is preparation, study. Like you say, you partied and didn't go over those lines. Mm -hmm. No, you got to shut it down. If I got an audition on Monday, I shut it down on Thursday. Ooh. I start studying all day Friday, all day Saturday, Sunday, all day Friday, I'm studying. All day Saturday and Sunday, I'm memorizing. Let me ask you quick. Hold on, let me, let me, let me finish right. this real quick. So for all the young actors out there, I pray and I meditate. And then I exercise for 25 to 30 minutes before I go into an audition. It's like playing basketball, which is not gonna keep you from being nervous, but you'll be able to control your nervousness. The warm up. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Right. So let, let me just put the hook on it. You're not gonna never not be nervous. I'm still getting a little nervous when that camera turns around, especially on a new set. Cause, cause you know, when you walk in as Clifton Powell, they expecting a grand slam, but I, I pray. I meditate and I exercise and do breathing exercise and I meditate and I go in focused. So that nerve's gonna hit you, but what happens when you lose it in the room is when the nerves overtake you. Okay, okay. Well, do you have a technique on memorizing stuff? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, technique, the technique I use is when you study the Stanislavski system, okay. you take everything as a beat. Like if there are people that know music, so it's gonna mm. pop, 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 pop. That's one beat. Pop, 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 pop. That's beat number two. Pop, 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 pop. That's beat number three. So when you got a scene or a monologue, you take the first beat is the first beat of thought. Like Mary walked into the room, she saw Alonzo sitting in the chair smoking some weed. That's the first beat. Alonzo got mad when she accused him. He ran out of the room. Uh, made a call, and then he left. That's beat number two. So you learn first beat, take the second beat, so forth, and I break it into beats. Nice. You know, and, and really people are like, well, those are lines. No, they're beats right. because it's a, a thought of action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I memorize that, and, I, and it, let, let's say we have 10 beats. I'll memorize the 10 beats one at a time. Beat number two, once I get that memorized, I'll go back to beat number one, run one, then I run two. Right. Then I go to three. Then I memorize three, I go back to one, run that, run two, two run three. three. It's one. work. Right, and sure. people think that this stuff is easy. It's hard work, but it's fun work if you understand training. And then if it's a huge, like my first day on uh, Black Lightning, I had a 10 page sermon. Ooh, So you page. break that, you gotta break it, but you gotta give yourself enough time to, uh, if you gotta be there on Monday, you got to start studying, if it's a 10-page sermon, you got to start studying a week before so that you give yourself enough time to read it. So what I do when I get a script, real quickly, mm -hmm. is I read the script mm -hmm. just to get the story. Mm -hmm. Then I read it for what, they, what the theme is. And then I read it again for what they're saying about my character. I make notes. Mm -hmm. And then I go back and I break it down into sections and beats, so to speak. Right, And right. then I learn all of that, and then I run it, run it, run it, run it. Right. Now, if it's some really heavy, heavy, heavy stuff, I get a reader. Like I did a, 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 a piece for Tyler Perry. Uh, one of his guys, one of his producers did a play. I, I came in on a Wednesday. They wanted me off a book by Saturday. I had to hire a reader to, mm -hmm. to run it with me. So wow. that's the part of the technique and training that you guys see. Wow, okay, okay. And, and that beat thing is, is true because I've done that too. I looked at like a paragraph <clears> and I'll break it down and I'll just make it, for instance, I'll just say like, um, 
um, you know, a, ma- a line like, um, I'm pissed off. Then the line mm-hmm. can be like, girl, what are you doing here? You, you late to come see me? I'm pissed off. Mm-hmm. Then another line can be like, you know, we've been together for 10 years and I don't know why you're doing me like that. Mm-hmm. I'll say like, pissed off. Been together for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I'll kind of keep those things in my head. In your head. Your and then hot I'll, points. Hot, the hot points. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I'll go that route. You so know. once you memorize it, mm-hmm. like he's saying, uh-huh. then you go back and you take the key words. So the first beat is Mary walks in the room. So you know, even if you get lost, it's all about Mary walking in the room. Mm-hmm. Second beat is you saw Alonzo smoking weed. So you may not have it all locked in. But even if you get lost, sometimes you might get lost and be able to improv your way out of it. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. That's a good question. I was going to ask you that. <clears throat> because I was, I've been a direct. I mean, I've been a casting. I directed my own movies. And I've cast people. I see them come in. Mm-hmm. Something that's kind of funny is you can know somebody and know what they can do, but they get in the room and get nervous. You're like, this ain't the same person. Right. I've had some people say, just, I've said, just say anything. They can just make up some <laughs> shit. I just want to see you be you. You mm-hmm. know, I wrote some, some parts and some stuff I've done to say, be you. Just, mm-hmm. I know how you are. You're a wild dude on stage. Mm-hmm. Just say, but I get in that room and get nervous. Now, um, Is that you or just other people you see? I, other people I've seen. I've casted them and stuff. But let's talk about that, though. Okay. So what happens is when you don't have the training and you got to go in and you haven't taken the time to work with a trainer or a coach, you could be all over the place. Because once you get in that room, man, your nerves can go to some places. Sure. Man, I have had some early on when I used to audition. <laughs> and, I, and I take my hat off to Miss Robbie Reed. I don't know if y'all know who I she know is. Robbie is. Robbie Reeve was one of is one of the biggest casting directors out there. And I saw Robbie in Vegas two summers ago and I just thanked her. I said, Robbie, thank you for keep bringing me in in those early auditions when I was a piece of crap. But they see something in you. But you only get like two of those. Yeah, because she ain't seen nothing to me. So, so part of it is you <laughs> just... What? I've been in a room with her. Yeah, you just got to be trained. But okay, the question I was going to ask you was, <clears throat> okay... I know you're not going to say you're cool, you're, you're all right for people to ad lib. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Because you want people to know the lines when they come in to read. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I also want people, to, if you get afraid, like say you're up there, because aren't, aren't most people, cast directors, looking for someone who can act? And not necessarily the lines are so important. Not saying the lines aren't important, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I need to know you can play this character. So if it's every word ain't exact, it's okay if, if you're nervous. If you're nervous, like, you know. I, are you do you are you okay with an actor going off line a little bit because they're nervous but staying in character? Or are you more the kind of person to say, man, mm. do the line exactly like it's written and don't do that because that can fear make people so afraid. Like I'll fuck, I'll fuck in that line up and okay. now they all off opposed to saying, you know what, I'm gonna roll with the character. <laughs> Nigga, I'll kill everybody in this motherfucking. Night. Oh, this guy's wild. That might not have been a line, but well, now you're thinking I fucks with him because he's a wild I boy. Th- I think what it is, every time. every 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 process is different. Okay, like I did a, in the heat of the night in my first. Big TV show mm-hmm. back in the 90s. And I, I had a line called, I said something like hunkadori. I told a lady, I said, black people don't say hunkadori. She said, they say it on this show. I, I like that. I thought, oh, damn oh, right. I'm, I'm going to be saying they say it on this show. And then on the practice, when you do the practice, they right. send you an you envelope. Right. When you do the practice, they send you an envelope. And they say, say the lines just like it's written. The the, the we don't. And that makes you nervous. So I think what happens is, it depends. Sometimes it depends on the casting director, because good casting directors will let you kind of go off a little bit and ad lib a little bit, mm-hmm. as long as you stay within the beats, right. and the theme of the character. Right, right. So I think a lot of that depends on the casting people. It, it's, is Tyler Perry <clears throat> the kind of person you got to stay with? Because he writes his stuff. Well, I, I've state. never auditioned for Tyler. I work with one of his producers. I never auditioned for Tyler. Oh, okay. but I, I. But I think Tyler, at least what I can feel is that he is. Uh, open-minded enough to kind of let, as long as you don't lose it in the sure, room, sure, sure, and you kind of go off because I've gone off before, you know, sure. off mm-hmm. book. Mm-hmm. Um, you said you did that in, in Friday with Ice Cube, right? Yeah, yeah, but 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 I've gone off book on some real string. Comedy is a little different. You can kind of right. find your way with comedy, but drama they kind of want to because what happens is writers. Every writer is different. Some writers want to hear their lines just like they wrote. Oh well, yeah, Quentin Tarantino. And, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. The only person who only, only person <clears throat> can, can go off book is Sam Jackson. I got you. Anybody else better say exactly yeah. what he wrote. I heard so word I, for word. I think I think it's 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 every situation is different. I would say to actors, ask if you can go off a little bit. You, let me ask you a question. Like this messed me up. I auditioned for what's the Tupac one? Ricky Harris was in it and stuff. Was it Point of Justice? Might have been. 
Was it Poetic Justice? Might have been Poetic. I think Robbie Reed was casting it. Okay. And it was a line talking about, I just came from Inner County. And it was Inner County like Jail. Mm-hmm. I'm from D.C. I, we, we, I, we never said it. We, I ain't L.A. dude. So I was mm-hmm. like, Inner County? What's Inner County? What does Inner County mean? And mm-hmm. I, that one little line, I couldn't Ooh, get off. over it. You couldn't get it. I couldn't get over. I was like Inner County, so I just came from Inner County. <laughs> What's Inner County mean? Like what? I, I didn't mm-hmm. know he meant in the jail, like the, mm-hmm. from the county. Mm-hmm. And that word, and, and, and that stumbled me. When I went to that audition, man, I, when Look. I was saying my lines, I got to that word, and I was like Inner County. I, I just couldn't. <laughs> I, I'm like, like, I don't know what the hell this word means. So mm-hmm. I think sometimes it's, it's okay as, a, as an actor to ask a question before, yeah, like, what yeah. is this? Does yeah. this mean? What yeah. is, you know? Or, or you're gonna ask, and can I? Can I? You know, I'm from DC uh, or, 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 or Alabama. Can we say it differently? Right. You know, and some casting directors give you a leeway. Some casting directors, some writers might be in a room and say, yeah, man, make it your own. Mm-hmm. It, every situation is different. I always tell actors, go in and ask questions. Like I, I got uh, South Central. I auditioned and one of the guys that knew my work, he said, man, Stan Latham. He said, give this guy he, who directed me in rock. He said, man, give him an adjustment. And he gave me an adjustment and I, I nailed it. You know, so sometimes I, I like to, when actors come in, I like actors to be relaxed. Make it your own. Don't worry about the words. Let me see where your characters, because some people audition well. Right, right. Oh, yeah. And, and when they get yeah. on a the set, they fall apart. Mm-hmm. And some people don't audition well, but when they get to the set, they're good. You know, so right, right, you gotta, it's, right. a, it's a, it's a crapshoot. Right, right. But and, and let me tell you something a lot of young actors, too. You get to do the part, you get the line, you do the line maybe 10, 15 times, you know, different angles and mm-hmm, so forth. Mm-hmm. So I noticed that I used to think it had to be one time, one take mm-hmm. only yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was. <laughs> Scared to death and shit. But I was like, when I found out, like, man, we do a little line here, yeah. we do a line here. If your ass ain't got them lines by a couple of them you know, yeah, takes yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, then you really don't belong in this business. Yeah. But I do notice, um, you know, I think I'm a good actor, a good actor, not a great actor. I think I'm a good, you know, above average. But I want to take it deeper. And I just think it's so dope when, like, yourself go deeper into a line, you know, crying or pissed off. Where it's not the casual yelling and, you know, man, fuck you, man, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we can do that. But when you get to the point where you're, you know, like it's so engrossed in that, mm-hmm. how do you stay in that moment when you got, remember, you got camera people around you, it's just mm-hmm. a scene, mm-hmm. cut, you got to do it again. Mm-hmm. You got to be back at that whole situation again. Well, how do you do that? I, I think the real thing that we've been saying, the through line to all of this, is training. Okay. When you're trained in whatever technique, but I say the Stanislavski system or the method acting, we're trained to, if, <clears throat> like when you shoot a movie, you, you shoot it out of sequence. Right, sure. So you might have all your crying scenes that come at the end of the movie the first day. First day, right, right. Prayer, meditation, warm up, and, and, and preparation. Okay. And you're ready for it. When they call cut, you're good. You might, have a, you might have to go to lunch. Okay, so lunch is an hour. You might take 45 minutes. In that last 10, 15 minutes, I go back and sit on set and just... Mm. It's all part of your training, mm. called inner monologue work, sense memory work, and you just sit there and go, "Are we back in? Yeah, we back in. Where's Cliff here? I'm, I'm right here. I'm just, I'm ready to go, and I'm back in character." Mm. I tell you what I saw on Ray, which is phenomenal, is that damn Jamie Foxx man. He would do Ray. Hello, and then he'd get out of Ray, do 15 minutes of comedy. For the crowd, and then go back and go, uh, 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 Miss Antoine, I'm here. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, this dude is on another level. And I was sitting in the scene watching him like, this dude on another level. But he had raised down so well that he could do that. Once you train on a certain level, because he, and he's a musician, so he, he was just locked in. So what I tell young actors, the first thing you got to do, man, is preparation. Get your beats your transitions, and, 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 and know the theme. Uh, get those lines. Get those lines. Because if you don't have those lines, you can't move. Right. And you're going to get nervous. But, yeah. And then it's focus. It's the same with playing basketball. All right. Same with football, all that stuff. You got to pre- – and then warm up. I always warm up and I warm down. Well, no, that, that, that's good. I got another question to ask you, though. Um, 
how did you how did you handle like adversity in this business? Because you've been around a long time. And I'm quite sure everything ain't been rosy. Mm. So there's been some ups and downs. Even though people see your career and think, man, I know you've been a thousand movies, but some people don't realize financially how the money moves and shakes and mm. stuff. Not just because you're on a film. I remember when I did Def Jam, people thought because I was on Def Jam, I was a millionaire. Like he, he easy with it. I was right back at the bank. I worked at Bank of America at the time. I was back, my ass was right back at the bank being a cashier. So um, how how did how do you handle um, like how the adversity of just being in the business, trying to get from roles, the roles just come and go, and to maintain that whole thing. Cause don't you, do you ever feel pressure to have to keep on working? <laughs> man, some great questions. You know, um, you know, man. I gotta tell you, bro. My father used to say to me, "Where there's a will, there's a way." And I just really, truly want to be a football player. And I really never imagined being an actor. I was reading it watching a thing the other day about Denzel. Denzel, I didn't know his story. He said he was at Fordham and he wouldn't want to be an actor. He just took an elective that was an acting class. He mm. <laughs> said, I kind of like this. Stumbled into this shit. Right, he stumbled into it. So when I got to New York, they were talking about this guy in this, this, this play called The Meeting that's playing Malcolm X. They said his name is Denzel Washington. And he said, everybody's coming to the show. So it kind of took me back to how I got started and the faith that you know, that, that I have, you know, my father used to say, all you need, people try to have too much faith. All you need is this much faith. Mm -hmm. See, you think it was? Yeah, yeah, size of a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. And I think through the adversity, my early part of my career when I was, I was so poor when I started, man, I just didn't know how to do anything else. I just didn't quit. I was living in a rooming house. I lived with one of my teachers. Um, I used to work at a, a a restaurant and I was a maid of D. It was a mafia restaurant. They never hired a black guy, but they hired me. Mugliani, Mugliani, you know, Mugliani. And I used to come in the morning, they had the mafia me. I'm like, y'all ain't got to worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I, I, I lived in a room in the house and I, 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 I didn't have a, a really a bathroom. So one of my college friends, one of my college female friends, would let me come out to her house. She's living with her aunt and I'd shower every Wednesday at her house and catch the train back to work. And then, you know, I remember I, I had, an, I had a, a meeting to get the job. I didn't have money, so I got all my pennies together. I walked 20 blocks to the cleaners. and I had to That's go. a sad story, nigga. No, 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 get no, to no, the no, part no, no. of... Shut the fuck uh, up. <laughs> Shut yeah. the fuck up. Because you can't tell that without talking about the early years of how you went through the adversity. Because right. what people see is when you make it. Right. right. So right. this is what I'm saying. But way before we got to Hollywood, it was... 10 years of intense struggle that if you don't have faith, you ain't going to make it to Hollywood. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I don't know how I did that mm -hmm. other than I believe that if, if, if you don't quit somewhere along the way, there'll be people to help you along. So when I was in a rooming house and my partner who went to college with me, he said, man, I can't let you stay here. So he mm -hmm. let me live at his house. His aunt mm -hmm. helped me get a job. So then when I got to LA, I had to start all over again. So there's no formula to this. Everybody, like I see my man Jim Pickens. You know who Jim Pickens is? I remember you saying that, yeah. Now yeah. Jim Pickens is the last guy that dropped, that jumped out of a soldier story. Uh, Denzel popped out. Right. A couple of other actors popped out. Right. Sam. Right. And then Jim just got, what, 10 years ago? Five. I see him all the time at auditions. I'm going, how does he keep going? It's just faith. But do you believe and, some people should give up? I mean, they've no. been doing around too long, man. They ain't got no roles yet. They ain't got no acting. They ain't they, they struggling. So, 10, so 15 so, years. So listen to what I'm saying. Everybody you see now has struggled 20 years. I struggled for 20 years. If you want it, you can't quit. So there's no formula. Rocky Carroll came right out of college, been working for 20 years straight. Every formula is different for everybody right, else. Right. So the way, you, way I deal with adversity is I just never quit, I keep praying, you cry, you fall down, you get back up, you stay connected to your people. You know, and that's why I said shut the fuck up, because- <laughs> um, You on the show, so I'm good. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so complicated, because when you look back, you don't know how the fuck you did. But how about this, okay, uh, that's, it was a different time <laughs> that you just struggled for 20 years. These kids nowadays ain't trying to fucking struggle for 20 years. They ain't gonna make it. it, it, it damn. Well, oh, no, let's, 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 let's be honest. They ain't gonna make it. But it's, it's different now. So different times, you know. The struggle is still the same. Okay. It's, it's 55 outlets now. So for 55 outlets, there are 55,000 more people. Yeah. I'm just telling you. 
Back in my day, you had three networks, ABC, no, four. Well, three before you, Fox. Had, you know, you had NBC, ABC, uh, and CBS. And then PBS came, and then Fox and all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. So now you have 55 outlets. So 55 outlets, you got billions of, thousands of, hundreds of more people. So not only now, back in the day, you know, going in a room, you and living in LA, you go in a room, just the LA people go in a room. Right. If you go in to live in Detroit, right. Right. you got to fly in mm-hmm. from Detroit. Everybody ain't flying in from Detroit. So you only competing with the people in LA. Right. Now you when you submit now on Zoom shit, on, on camera, you zoom right. in Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Tennessee, you really Filipino. Be good. Filipino. Yeah. Listen, mm-hmm. I've been down here six years and I ain't booked one job from a Zoom meet. From, hey, nigga, but you got a history. You no, got no, but you listen got, what I'm no, saying. Pierre, fair, listen what I'm saying. Listen what I'm saying. It ain't fair. I have not booked you, one you job. No, listen what I'm saying. And I still audition. And it's called me for the good time story. I have not booked Jimmy Walker, nigga. You don't know Jimmy no, not Jimmy Walker. Some other character. <laughs> I have not booked one job from uh, what do they call it? What, uh, self tape. Self tape. Yeah. I haven't booked one job from self tape. How many self tapes have you put out in the last About six years? Fifty. Really? In the last couple of years, I have, I'm being honest with you. See, because you want me to tell you this shit, right? I'm telling you the shit that's really real. Now, see, he didn't it, get fifty now. Yeah? No, so he's maybe in two too. years, maybe I've had let's say thirty auditions. I ain't, I ain't booked one of them, or let's say fifteen. Do you think the reason why? Do you think it's a reason? Because why? it's 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 a bigger pool now, bro. And some of the young producers don't know my work. So you, you need to be in a room. You need to be in a room to be successful. You think? Be honest. I, well, I'm at a point now where it don't matter no more. Because once I take my full pension, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> you really pension know. with the pension. No, I'm just saying, bro. I don't have to. I have to work no more. I have to worry about <laughs> money no more. I mean, this shit is. You know, this shit is. I mean, we have some of our friends who I told you some of our pe- friends who passed away. They make enough money to bury themselves. Right, so, right. so in March, right? yes. So when you talk, when you talk, when you talk about <laughs> adversity, and this is why I want to talk about this. It's it's you got to be able to start this business, have faith, get your talent assessed, and be willing to put in ten to fifteen years steady work. Most people don't make it overnight. It's no no. Okay, sense. let me ask you this. You know, there's a thing called the casting couch back in the day. Mm. You know, do you find or is it true, like, some of these young young ladies, I don't know, men, if they're gay, I guess, whatever, throw themselves at people to try to get in. You know what I'm saying? Sexually. You know what I'm saying? Trying to, you know, they'll come on to you, you know, or the producer or the director, try to be nicer to them. You know, hey, 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 trying to work their way up. And I always tell people like this, hey, you can fuck your way up and you can fuck your way out, down, as long as you fucking. <laughs> it's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna what be did one you do, Cliff? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, y'all niggas are fucking crazy. Yeah, but I'm, but I'm just saying that's real shit. Have you? Uh, you see where I'm at, nigga? Yeah. Dick game ain't right right now. Shit, okay? it, was, it was back in the late '90s. Was the, you saw the movies I was in? But no, I used um, to date Richard Pryor. Right. Did, did, fuck did, uh, hell no. Did um? Do you ever find that out? Do you ever find people that like even young females trying to come at you to try to help you know get themselves elevated, or mm. you've seen that? before do you see women you know let me say this let me say something else you ain't got to mention a name but have you seen somebody fuck their way to the top like i remember when she first started now she's a star you ain't got to mention no names have you ever seen that and felt like that's what how she moved to the next level no name um, needed um let me say this that's a very complicated question <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not finna this nigga trying to walk past I'm, like a minefield I'm not, I'm what not, the not, fuck did he say this fuck no. This motherfucker want me to fall down the well. I'm not finna fall down that well. Let me let me say this, man. It's, it's this shit is so complicated. It's just like when you say, "How'd you overcome adversity?" My formula is prayer and meditation and faith and don't fucking quit. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. I'll give you. Ralph Farquhar said to me, "I don't get happy when I'm up, and I don't get too sad when I'm down." Mm-hmm. I didn't. And the reason I went back and and I give when I do I'm gonna do an evening with Clifton Powell is give everybody the whole picture. You can't look at me now. Yeah. I used to memorize the postman's route to get my $97 every two weeks from unemployment. Mm. You know, I mean, the first 10 years before I got to Hollywood was rough. And then I had to start all over again in Hollywood, working all kinds of jobs. I used to work at the swap meet. I used to mm-hmm. fucking work at uh, Covenant House. I used to do clerical work. Mm-hmm. I used to do phone sales. I just never quit. Okay? So when we talk about adversity, if this is your passion, don't quit. So fucking your way no, up to the top no, is no, all right, sh- then. Sh- shut Let's up. get to that. Shut up, shut up. No. That's what I'm not making. That's what I'm saying. 
because I want to clean that adversity thing up uh, uh, because it's very important about what p choices people make to think they're going to make, it, okay. which rolls into fucking your way to the top. Okay. It's no such thing as fucking your way to the top. Really? Yeah. Let me if call you, Mariah Carey. If you don't, Madonna. <laughs> if you don't have any talent, at some point you're going to hit a wall. There's an article, and I can't think of the white girl's name, but she slept with all the heads of the f couple Marilyn of heads. Marilyn Monroe? Of, no, not Marilyn yeah. Monroe. Yeah. But um, no, 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 no. This is a true story. Mm -hmm. And she was dealing with some of the big executives. And, and what happened was they promised her all this shit, but because of the chain of command, they couldn't just come in and say, I know this Pierre show, but yo, she been to be a motherfucking star. They were like, hold on, man. Wait a minute. You can't just do that as an exec and call the network and say, yo, uh, old girl about to be a star. So she's suing all of, all ahead of those guys because she thought she could fuck her way to the top. But some people have fucked their way to the top. Come on, Clifton. We have the family here, bro. I, I, I'm just being real with you. I, I, I am too. I, I, I believe that there's no such thing as fucking your way to the top. Now, can you position yourself to move in a different way? Through sex? No, I think, no, listen to what I'm saying, listen to what I'm saying, because I'm, this is what I teach. And I get female students who, like my girl's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You're going to hit a wall where you're going to get challenged. But part of that is there's only a few actresses that I've met that got any street game. And when I say street game, they know the game, like from Southeast, like Lisa Ray got game. Mm -hmm. You know that Harvey Weinstein came to the, door with his robe open mm -hmm. but these girls came to his room at one o'clock in the morning so what was harvey thinking what were they thinking and they got mad because he just came right at him if if you was my friend and harvey come to the door and i'm coaching you from behind i'm saying hey harvey now you know damn well you ain't supposed to have your robe open harvey listen harvey meet me first of all i ain't coming at one o'clock meet me downstairs yeah. so listen what i'm saying you gotta have game and you gotta know how to finesse because eventually, even if you think you're gonna fuck your way to the top, you're gonna hit a ceiling and it's gonna close on you. Yeah, but, but, hold on, but if you have some kind of talent, it can help you get through the ceiling. Well, I'm not gonna say she, she, she fucked her way to the top, but what's the one, America's Next Top Model? Who runs that show? Oh, sorry, <laughs> man. She was dating John Singleton, rest in peace. But I'm like saying, a real couple. Hold on, hold on. When they were doing poetic, no, what was they doing? The school one. School, high learning. High learning. High learning. She was in that movie, right? When that movie came out, guess who broke up? Her and John Singleton. Yeah, she started dating Chris Webber. Uh, well, right, but, but, <laughs> so, but, but, but let me ask you a question. That was love. Yeah, that was let real ask, love. Let that me ask you a question. Her, her, top model with this nigga. But, I, but you know what I tell people? She might have liked them. But you know really? what I'm saying? And then right during the filming process, then it was all with it kind of didn't work out no more. <laughs> Man, if y'all don't go on with that, I, get, I don't know. I'm not saying no, she did that. No, but listen, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying. Some people position themselves. Not saying her, but some people have but done it. It's that. one thing to position yourself, and it's another thing to say fucking to the top. You can't, there's no, I'm telling you. There's no such thing as fucking to the top. You can't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Fuck call yourself it. into a nice break. How about no, that? No, you can. Top. You can. <laughs> <laughs> place. You can position yourself. Just back in Marilyn Monroe's days, if you saw the the TV series Hollywood, everybody mm -hmm. that hasn't seen it, right. Go watch it. Netflix. You can marry up. You can date up. I think if you're pretty, and because the thing that the, the premise is, okay, you just drove on a lot in a little raggedy ass car. The Negro you dating at home is beating your ass. Don't even want you to go to auditions. And you just met Denzel Washington or um, Brad Pitt. And he's the executive producer. And he's like, hey, you beautiful. I'd love to take you to lunch. And you're like, no, nah, I got a little boyfriend. And this Negro at home is treating you like shit. You should go out with Brad Pitt. And you might fuck Brad Pitt. I'm not saying, I ain't saying nothing and about sex. Brad Pitt, I might say, you know what? That waitress girl, we have no part for I ain't said nothing about sex because, uh, let me tell you the flip you side. No, 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 no. Oh no, God. but I'm saying, no, 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 let me just say this. Let me, but I'm going to tell you how the game go because it's, it's way more than fucking. It's, if, right. I know, can't say the name, but I know a big white star who used to take this girl to the set with him all the time. And he was huge. He never let out the trail. You know why? No, 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 no. You know why he let her out? Because he knows she was going to try to move up. So it's... it's, it's move it's, up! Move up! That's what I'm trying to tell you! What I'm saying Suck is, and move up. No. Suck 
and move up. <laughs> so, and move up. <laughs> no, not them. Bro, you need help, bro. <laughs> you not. No, because I think, I think, listen, listen, it's funny, but from the outside, that's what it looked like. Mm-hmm. But let's just look at Marilyn Monroe. Okay. Did she win or lose? She won. She didn't. If you leave Holly, no, she, man, if we're I talking tell, about it right now. I tell you to shut the fuck up again. They had to get hold on, hold on. Let's listen to it. She left Hollywood in a fucking body bag. If you leave that motherfucker in a body bag, listen, you didn't win. I don't give a fuck what you say. If Dorothy Dandridge was dating a guy, right. she had to she had to go hang out with Otto Priminger. Right. Correct. And, right. He knocked on that door and she's like, oh, I know if I dance to the music, I got to pay the piper. Mm-hmm. But she also dated a motherfucker that bankrupted her. And she left in a body bag, bro. Okay. So she didn't win. Okay, so Claire Taylor lived to be 95. Claire who? Taylor. Who's that? Exactly, man. She ain't fuck nobody, and we don't know her. We're talking about Dorothy Gavin and Marilyn Monroe, nigga. So she who in the hell is Claire Taylor? <laughs> exactly. And that's the one who ain't fucking nobody. No, I'm saying. The one who ain't fucking nobody. I'm, I'm saying. Fucking way to the bottom, nigga. <laughs> no, you, no, no. So, so listen, this is really interesting <laughs> shit. Because you know what's funny about this? People have different variations about what they see. Right. I tell all my, I tell, I told my girl, you might get to a place where if I trained you and got you in the game, I can't get you signed. Her, she just got signed. Her mm-hmm. her tape, her audition, her monologue that I coached her through got her signed. Period. It's the work. Now, if she works in Atlanta and goes out to L.A. as fine as she is, and I tell her this, you're going to hit a ceiling. And you got to learn how to negotiate around that shit. So most of the people that you think fucking their way to the top, they don't have enough game to finesse these cornball ass producers Hold on, let me not say that. Not all no, of them, but that. a lot of them are, are not. A lot of them, a lot of them are not street guys. So, at the end of the day, if I'm coaching you, and Harvey say, "Hey, meet me at the hotel room at one o'clock," I'm gonna tell you, go meet Harvey at nine. Call him up. Say, Harvey, I'm at the bar. He's like, yeah, "Come on, but the room." No, Harvey, meet me at the bar. Cause it's not about fucking. It's about the chase. So, it's so many levels to. How do you position yourself? You got to learn how to play the game. And a lot of Dorothy Dangers, I love Dorothy Dangers. Marilyn Monroe, I love. But they didn't have no game. They didn't come from the hood. They ain't no street. No, that's why I talk about this shit because it's a level of uh, a game you got to have. It's a it's a, it's a PHL I mean, game. I hear you. And, I hear you. and that's what it is. And, and, and anything you. less than that, you ain't going to make it. And then if you get to that next level, you're going to short circuit because... The shit overtakes you. Right. So you got to watch Hollywood. All right. So what I did is... Woo! I, I, invited, I need a drink. No, it's good, good. You know. mm. I invited some people. Some I need young, some Hennessy. I invited some young Shut actors. Up. <laughs> I know that's right. Who sent you? No. <laughs> I, hey, man, I invited some, some shit, young bro. actors to ask you some questions. And my, my, uh, my, Don't my, ask my, me my nothing girl. about fucking. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, about the business of acting. Um, I got my man Josh down there. What's we up, got, Josh? Of course, we have the lovely uh, Sunshine there. Sunshine. We got the lovely and talented Tammy. Hey, my man Chris. The What's two gentlemen the and, 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 and Man, Sunshine does head, acting right? too. You want to be an actress? No. You don't no, want to be no, actor? No, okay, no, too, too much shy. for you. Well, the two guys on the side, and you know, they're young actors here in uh, Atlanta doing well, done some couple little shows. And so I wanted to bring them in to hear from a, a, a you know, legend like yourself the real shit because you're going to tell them the real shit. So if y'all got a question to ask them, feel free to ask them. This is the time to ask them, if you, or two ladies, if y'all want to ask them a question. Oh, a question? well, I was mm-hmm. just going to say I've been in a couple movies and mm-hmm. – um, it was only when they would tell us what to do and then we could just freestyle. So mm-hmm. you saying that you have to do the work is, I mean, I, it resonates with me because it's like, that's the one thing I haven't done mm-hmm. is the work. And it's just as important as you're saying it is. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I don't think I want to do the work because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just too shy. Like when they you. tell you to do something, like I can be myself all day, but yeah. when it's like, okay, act like mic. this or act like that, right. it's so hard and I get so yeah. shy and you know, it's like. Hey, hey, this, so, hey listen, this, this so business. She got to fuck that. her way to the top. <laughs> uh, she got to work. Look, well, this yeah. is where I am. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> she fucking way down. <laughs> I'm, what's her name? Yeah. Lady name? Whatever. Miss Clara. Miss <laughs> Clara. All right. All right. Well, you I, know, let me let me let me address that though. This business is not for everybody. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think I think um, it's got to be a passion because mm-hmm. this is this is not easy work. It's a lot of pitfalls, and I know we joking about fucking your way to the top. Mm-hmm. But if you're a pretty girl and you dating a bum and you run into somebody on the next level and this Negro is not trying to elevate you, 
then you need to step away from them because I can tell you what I needed to do. If I could go back, I flirted with one of the big stars back in the day and, and I didn't know how to elevate. And thank God I landed in the middle. So it's not so much like we talk about fucking your way. You need to position yourself to, to be able to be elevated and, and be in those circles. It's just, that's just human nature, if you ask me. So, so real quick, so <clears throat> flirt with that person, you flirted with him to the point, you thought it could have led something else, like romantically, and then that well, could have helped you a career, well, or well, just on the I, set I, joking? I, 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 well, when you start out, mm -hmm. you like entry level. Mm -hmm. If you entry level at IBM, right. you, Damn, you, old you got a goddamn bus I know, I know. to work, and mm -hmm. the boss think you're a good looking young lady, mm -hmm. but you at home, and your boyfriend treat you like doo-doo, mm -hmm. and you you struggling with him and he don't want you to advance in a, in your career or at IBM and the boss is cool and you like the boss, mm -hmm. it might start off as friendship. I don't have no problems with that. I believe that if your home life is right, then y'all team and y'all building together. But if your shit ain't right at home and your man ain't really on your team and you gorgeous or you sexy or your boss is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what I did. If I could go back, I was just playing around with this lady I work with. Mm -hmm. I was just joking. Right. Because I had a fiance who was gorgeous as big right. as her. Right. But if I could go back, when I tell my students, I can tell you right now, you I lost five million. I ain't say nothing about fucking. Oh, okay. People keep talking about fucking. This shit is not about fucking. Because you can fuck and stay right where the fuck you at. Fact. It's about positioning yourself with the right people that have a mindset to elevate you. So this chick... Young lady didn't break the game down to me because nobody breaks the game down to you. She didn't say, well, you know, I can help you do this and this. She just said, you come to my house, you got to stay. I'm like, oh, I can't stay. I'm just playing around. I got a fiance. But if you ask me now, after losing five million of my divorce, right. if I look back, if I had to do it again, I'm going to her house but, but, and right. I'm going to have dinner. Listen, I'm going to go to her house, I have you. dinner, get to know her. Right. If, if, if it becomes intimate, if that goes, because it don't always have to be intimate. If they like you, they might uh, take they you to the- invite you to their house to not fucking. Brother, what's no, wrong with you? That's not necessarily true, bro. So that person, that young actress that said, I'm, come, come bro, to my house, I'm you, you, you got to stay. You think they want to stay for you would be a gardener, okay. nigga? What listen, do you, what listen, you think is happening I'm here? It don't, she wanted it sex. It start off by, but listen, sometimes say, okay, let's talk about uh, 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 meeting the star. Say you meet Brad Pitt and you fuck Brad Pitt. Now Brad don't want you around because he can't get no other coochie. So you didn't fuck yourself out of a job. Yeah. It's so many pitfalls to the shit. Mariah Carey it was with Tommy McTola. She okay. fucked with him and got a record okay, career. That's, so that's, they ain't all niggas. And that not, ain't the right couple. And they, she didn't like not, the nigga It's either. not everybody. But uh, I'm so, saying, so right, so don't put that out of the air. No, but I'm saying that nine times out of ten, you can't fuck your way to the top, bro. It's a, about bro. making the right moves politically, socially, you got to get with people to know how to right. elevate mm -hmm. you. And if you, and this really goes for men and women, you know, mm -hmm. because if you watch Hollywood, Rock Hudson, fuck this way out of the game, bro. They get died of AIDS. He didn't win. So I don't give a fuck what nobody tell you. I can tell you what the fuck I went through. You can't fuck your way to the top. All right. Yeah. If you leave Hollywood in a body bag, you didn't win. Yeah. If you everybody die, dies. Dies. everybody dies. Uh, everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna what about, about Miss Holland? Who is the lady you said, Miss Holland? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna Next go question. On that one. <laughs> Let's start talking about fucking up. <laughs> I got a few questions. Um, so you was talking about? No, you ain't. I ain't. No, nigga, I ain't going out with you. <laughs> 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 I'm going to rub no, my head and shit. You was talking no, about joking, uh, joking. working with directors. So of course you need chemistry with your director to have a successful project. Okay. So how? You mean working with directors as an actor? Yes. Okay. So. How do you build chemistry with the directors you work with? Ooh, that's another good question. Mm -hmm. I was right up there with fuck. That's why I brought him in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, every director is different, bro. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some directors are tough. And you just got to come in and do, you just got to be prepared. And sometimes when you do a movie, like when we did Ray, you go down and rehearse for a week. You get a chance to go out to dinner and lunch. And then when you get on the set, director could be totally different it could be nice at dinner and shit mm -hmm. i mean taylor hackford was on my ass like i dropped one line he said you dropped the fucking line man say you got one line say the fucking line he so directed I, you in a ray yeah right and i don't think i ever really bonded with him mm -hmm. but at the end he sent me a card that said a note and a gift that said to cliff powell my go-to guy because a lot of those scenes in ray I, he just threw me in so i was mm -hmm. prepared so and then there's some directors like uh 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 um Benny Boone, mm -hmm. just cool. Uh, Tasha Smith, uh, 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 Robert Townsend, you know, you can bond with or you can vibe with and mm -hmm. 
get a little room. But directors are under so much pressure when you're directing a movie. It just depends on the director. And I've seen some directors, that you do a scene, and they just walk away. Like, yeah. You're yeah. like, do I do good? Do I do bad? Yeah. And sometimes, even as actors, even at maybe his level, they still need affirmation. Affirmation? What's the word? Uh, affirmation. 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 You know, nigga, I'm, I'm a comedian. Affirmation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Affirmation sometimes. Well, you funny as fuck. <laughs> and, and I, when I direct you, you got to know how to do, do shit. <laughs> right. You, exactly. you ain't going to fuck your way. You ain't going to get the words <laughs> right. Where's Miss Claire? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anybody else have another question real quick? No, but let, let's go back real quick. Um, what I tell actors is be good to work with mm -hmm, and be right. amiable and be uh, 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 flexible. Mm -hmm, right. and, don't, and don't get in your head when you're fucking with directors because directors got all kinds of shit going on. Every director works differently. Just come in, be ready, be prepared. Don't come in with all that ego and all that little bullshit because I've seen actors on all kinds of levels. Yeah. You know, And if you feel disrespected by an actor or by a director, mm -hmm. pull them aside and try to talk with right. them. Okay. You know? Did I answer your question? Yeah. Right. One okay. more question. One more question. Yeah, I just got a um, I got a statement on the question because I want to touch on the on the sex thing because mm -hmm. my thing is you know we got especially as black men you don't want to get Jason Mitchell, you know what I'm saying where you messing with somebody. Jason Mitchell was an actor from <coughs> well, on, uh, the, the Shy, the Shy, straight out across of the line. Yeah, yeah, across the line. So that's I just right. wanted to really make that clear, you know, for the people that's listening, especially men, because it's we got to be careful how we move. And uh, yeah, so well, that, I mean, yeah. Let's, let's address uh -huh. that though. Yeah. So, so all my career, I was raised by women. Mm -hmm. Just gotta come to set and be respectful. Period. Yeah. It's a different time. Maybe back in Cosby day, you could just grab my asses and all that shit and make innuendos. Stay in your fucking lane. That's what I tell actors. And I'm sorry, excuse my language. Stay in your lane. If you're not invited and it's not mutual, then it's assault. It's a yeah. problem. I mean, I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about me, what I've done my whole career. You got to understand this is work and you got to stay in your lane yeah. and you got to be respectful. And, and if you do that, even if you're attracted to somebody, take it off the set and talk about it. Put it on a table. Yeah. But you got to be respectful. That's funny. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. and, and because I think if you don't, the climate is just... The climate, even back in the day, it was disrespectful on yeah. a lot of levels. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't you know? date. I don't, I'm, my, my number one rule now that I'm not famous is I said I'm never going to mess with no woman on set that I work with. And that way I cancel all that. I ain't even got to worry well, good about luck it. With you know that. what I'm saying? That you're not famous, you're not going to do it <laughs> now? No, I'm saying I learned the lesson now. So when I do get famous, I already got that discipline. Like That way can't nobody Jason Mitchell me because I'm not fucking you. At all, okay. but I want to give. I, I like what he said. Would you just say? <laughs> you tell he me? said, "Good luck with that." Good luck with that. I'm messing with nobody you work with. I appreciate it because you spend it. more time with them than you do your mate. This is exactly. what I say. Exactly. Yeah, this, is, this is what I tell. I'll people. call you. Let me tell you what I get in that situation. This always yep, been my yep. motto. I did a play early on in my career. Shut up, because I got to go back to the beginning. Okay. And I dated this girl in the play, and when I tell you, it was the most nerve wracking shit ever. Because I call at the play. Hey, hey, Kim, we gonna go get something to eat. Oh yeah, my friend came tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, now I'm I'm just I'm torn apart. So what, I, I said, so what friend? What friend? She had a friend come to the show and they go out. out. Oh okay okay. And, so and I'm like, I see them walking out, holding hands. You're like, oh, I just was just with you last night. Right. So I tell yeah. actors, don't shit where you eat. Yeah. Period. Period. If you keep that in your head and stay respectful, yeah. you'll be all right. Because I had kicked out of play for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She you, was. You, you sitting sit where you ate at? Yeah, I, we went on date, and when she got mad, she told the director he made me feel uncomfortable, and he took right. me off the play. And that was right. with Don. That right. was the play right. with Don Broomfield. Wow. You, um, you gotta be careful. Wow. Yeah. I've had, I've had a, a girl, a makeup girl, uh, I think wardrobe girl, try to say some shit. Yeah. The other girl that was in the trailer, she said he ain't do none of that shit. Yeah. Like mm. she came on to me, trying so to. So she lied. Around. She was trying to lie on you. She lied. Yeah, but you can't lie on me because I stay in my lane. You can't. Nice. You can't get me. I don't get in trouble. I never been arrested. I don't do yeah. drugs. You right. can't get me. So if you come fuck with me, yeah. you gotta make sure your game is tight because I because I because I was raised by women and I was raised to be respectful. And I had fun and I had crazy ladies man and had a lot of fun. But I stay in my lane when I'm working and I don't cross those lanes. Yeah. But this was, this was my question about real quick. Mm -hmm. So my question was, how do you feel about LA actors? Well, how do you feel about Atlanta actors? the stigma of having to move in LA because I I know for a fact Tyler has seen me at least twice mm -hmm. and I've been confirmed that he's chosen the LA actor and it makes me feel and me and my partner Josh he's about to move out to LA in April and I'm gonna stay here 
So we're going to kind of see, kind of, you know, I get to see, you know, where his career goes or whatever. Or if he, he say, Chris, is popping out here. You need to move out here or whatever. But anyway, how do you feel about having to move to L.A.? Or do you feel like an Atlanta actor can be successful That's in That's a good question. I, I, I personally believe L.A. is always going to be the film industry. Mm-hmm. And that's not to take anything away from Atlanta. But what happens is a lot of the integral roles. Now, I think it's, it could change after COVID. Yeah, because the tax breaks down here are, it's like 10, 15, 20 productions that were shooting before they shut down. But some of the major roles come still come out of LA. Mm. And it's almost like when I lived in New York, they was like, well, if you want to do LA, you got to go to LA, you know? So I think that you always want to get into that big pond, that big ocean. LA is the big ocean. And, and until we build more studios down here and we, you know, do more things down here and some of the writing and originate, originates down here because all of the shows, even the shows like Black Lightning, those shows, they originate out of LA. Mm-hmm. So until that happens, I think you still got to get on that big ocean. And like I was doing at some point doing well in New York, but I had to go to LA in that big ocean, you know? Right, sure, and, sure. and that's really what it is. And it's, I don't think it's personal. It's, it's this, and when you have a movie, you got people in your back saying, I need this guy, I need this guy, I need this guy. You know, I called about good times. My guy is a producer. He said, Cliff, everybody in Hollywood is auditioning for this thing, man. I said, well, call me when you guys finish with that round of auditions and y'all didn't find what you want. Oh, cocky ass nigga. It's not, it's not cocky. cocky ass, it's, it's, just, it's just that cocky. everybody, I don't really want to put my my name in. I, I don't really want to audition for it. See, I said my, it before and they never called me. Yeah, I, I, said, I, I don't really. The next round. I don't really want to audition for it. If you guys look at my reel, you see my work, I play every character you can think of. Yes, you have. Then it, and, if you, and if you're not comfortable with it, then make your other choices. Now, am I in a position to do that? Right now, I am. Yeah. Maybe six months from now, the COVID keep going, I might not be. Yeah. Right. So I don't think you should get into Atlanta, New York, right. LA. Go get that work. On that, on that note, man, I want to thank you. You can have you here forever, brother, man. You you always kicking the knowledge. I know this, people are going to love this show, man. Leave stuff in the comments, man. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and you know hit that notify button. Click. Um, Clifton, thank you so much for coming through again, thank bro. You. I mean, thank for you. real, man. I mean, it just feels real. Like I'm, like I'm talking to a friend, man, and, and someone kicks, kicks the knowledge. That's why I asked these young comics, I mean, mm-hmm. young actors to come through because yes, I want them to hear from the truth, you know, from the real deal. People say all kind of things and you should do this, you should do that. That's why some of these people don't know. Oh, young com- comedy. Mm-hmm. See, that's why they're already mm-hmm. on social media, right? In the mm-hmm. middle of the goddamn mm-hmm. show and shit. They don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you wonder why they don't make it and shit, because they weren't paying attention to what you were saying and shit. But that's how they roll like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that shit. But um, they ain't old school. So again, I want to thank you for thank coming you, through, man. brother, man. Um, much success on everything you do. You're already a legend, man. You really are. And I thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for and, having um, me. And I think we should do a little class out here in Atlanta, man. I think a, we should. A, a acting class, man, and some knowledge, you know what I'm saying? You know saying? what I think we should do? I think, I think you should put it together. Okay. I'm Your fan thing. base and and, you know, all my the family, people, you got a big ass fan base. Everybody that's, I was gonna say, everybody supports me. I don't really like to do um, one-on-one classes mm-hmm. anymore. I don't like to coach, but I would love to do something with you and your base and my base where okay. we do, you know, a, a, a big workshop where we, you know, do a lecture and there it is. we do some classes and whatever. Let's all put right, it together. We can make that happen. Yes, sir. Hey, y'all, thank y'all for, uh, for watching, man. Pierre's Panic Room. It's another great episode. I want to thank y'all for sitting there uh, watching and listening to this, man. My man kicked it. Um, had a great time. Thank you for my uh, my, my guest comedian host, uh, the lovely Sunshine. My girl, my Sunshine. ride or die all the time, Tammy Dior. My man Josh came through, a young actor. And my man Chris came through, a young actor. Um, again, thank you for that knowledge, y'all. I'll catch y'all on the flip side, man. Thank y'all. I'll see y'all next week. And we out of here. DJ Will, take it out for us, brother. See if you're still about it. Let you know that I'm not real about it. Let me know. Mm. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it. <laughs>